Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome into Guess Blade episode number 41. My goodness, who would have ever thought we would have gotten to 41 episodes? But uh, you guys have made it happen. Thank you so much for sending all of your amazing knives out here and giving me the chance to play with them and share them with everybody else. Today I'm going to share something really pretty special, a maker that most people don't know about yet, uh, and he is really, really starting to come up, uh, and his name is Dan Galloway. Now, Dan Galloway is a part-time knife maker that just began his journey, and the quality of work that he's putting out is actually quite astonishing for the length of time he's been making knives. But now before I get into the knives and into the maker, I do want to thank Mr. Bill Gallagher, who was kind enough to donate this knife. You can follow him over on Instagram. His handle is at BillG3232. Uh, go check him out. Uh, super, super nice guy. I mean, he was so he was just all about getting the chance to share this with all of you guys that when it first was being made, he had actually sent me an email and said, hey, can I just have uh, Mr. Galloway send the knife straight to you? I'm like, no, dude, <laughs> get your knife, enjoy it, have some fun with it, carry it, do your thing with it, and when the newness wears off, I'm happy to play with it. Plus, I had the live show coming up, and I was like totally in live show mode. That takes me a couple of weeks of prep to get one three-hour live show going, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it was just a little bit of a hectic time. So it worked out great. He's been carrying it. He fell in love with it, and he was kind of giving me updates uh, every few days, telling me what he thought of the knife. And he was so excited to share it with all you guys. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's talk about the knife first. What you're looking at is a flipper in CPM 154. Fantastic steel. Beautiful hand rub satin that's been done on it. And you've got a full tie frame lock. Beautifully machined, nice texture throughout, great anodized colors, and he's gone with the Mokutai clip. Not only that, but you've also got the Mokutai pivot ring as well. I Actually, it might be Timascus. I mean, Timascus and Mokutai are the same thing, just a slightly different process in the, the making of them. So uh, I apologize. I do believe it's actually Timascus. And uh, great machining on these holes. It seems like everybody and their brother is putting holes in their frames these days. And these are done a little bit differently. I really like the depth that's presented. And we got to realize these are not super crazy thick scales. But he's also contoured them a lot too, so a lot of material has been taken away. But he's created this wonderful three-dimensionality with those holes. They're not just holes drilled into the frame. I really, really dig that. And it's a nice place to kind of hold your, uh, to hold your thumb. And for those that like the, uh, the idea of speed holes, uh, which allow you to kind of pivot your knife around a little bit, you just kind of drop your thumb in there. It's a neat idea. Now, the first thing I noticed when I held this knife, besides the wonderful flipping action, was I looked at it from this angle, and I was immediately, immediately impressed. Take a good look at the tolerances between the frame and that blade. This is not typical representation of a brand new maker's work. It is fantastic. Then the next thing I noticed was this accordion style lock bar relief cut. Instead of cutting out a really big notch in here, which a lot of people, myself included, not really a big fan of. It's a utilitarian thing. Most of the times you can't get away from it. I do prefer the aesthetics of doing the relief cut on the inside of the frame, but many people would argue that it's not going to hold up well, it's not going to give the proper amount of tension, and I'm not going to get into that debate. But I like this because you're not taking away from the design, you're still getting the same functionality, but you're doing it in a way that it doesn't detract away from the beauty of your knife. And I think that's brilliant. And it's really great to see somebody, especially so new, that's looking for innovations. Now, the story with Dan Galloway is this. 
He's actually a uh, CNC operator. This is that's what he does for a living, and he is uh, very very good friends with Lee Williams. Matter of fact, they uh, grew up together, and Lee has kind of taken him under his wing and taught him everything there is to know about making a folding knife. So he's been working in and out of Lee's shop. He's been getting all that tutelage from somebody that does such incredible work. And it was actually uh, he and Lee that came up with this style of lock bar relief. Now, you can obviously, some, obviously see some very heavy Lee Williams inspiration in the design of this knife. As a matter of fact, the, you know, all the knives that he's built so far really emulate Lee Williams' work. But here's the cool thing. He is already working on some brand new, completely you know, from the ground up designs of his own. So he's going to start building in his own identity. Uh, this model here, the Stingray, is actually not going to be around for very long. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to be on uh, Dan's books for a knife in the future. Don't know how long that will be. And he's already told me, because it probably won't be a Stingray by the time I get down to you, just because I'm going to be evolving into other models. So... When you take a look at this and you look at all of the details, you really begin to understand where CNC is becoming a major tool for knife makers. As he was telling me, we had a chance to chat on the phone for about an hour the other night. He says, you know, I really couldn't have achieved this checkered style texture in any other way. He says, the CNC is so precise. It was something that allowed me the freedom to do whatever I wanted to do and get the level of precision all the way around. And sure, you can do checkering by hand. I don't know that I would want to do hand checkering on a curved surface. Um, I, it would just be scary as hell to me. You look at these guys that do that file work by hand on like custom 1911s or whatnot. You know, you pay a tremendous amount of money to get that done because it's so much work. Well, now you've got tremendously more area here to do that with than, you know, the front strap of a 1911, which would be just about that much. So you've got a lot more work, and then you're obviously doing it twice. So doing it with the CNC allowed him the precision, and he could do whatever patterns he wanted to do. And then basically what he said he's doing is... You know, he's pre-cutting everything, and then everything is completely hand-formed, hand-fitted. He's getting the basic framework of the knife done, but everything else is done by hand. So you, you really do have to consider this to be a full custom knife, just like you would with so many other makers that are pre-cutting in water jet or CNC, but not doing the complete process that way. Fantastic action. I'm having to baby it a little bit. It's not the knife's fault. Uh, my finger, I actually have a flipper trauma. My The skin on my finger just split open the other day as I was flipping some knives uh, because I, I apparently am just doing it way too often. So um, I will give you a couple of good flips here, but if it starts bothering me, I don't want to bleed all over Bill's knife here. I was playing with uh, the, the knife I actually did to me. I was playing with my whole back way back. And I'm like, what's that weird feeling? And then I looked down, there was blood all over my knife. So I don't want to do that to Bill's knife here. But the action really is quick, smooth, very snappy, nice detent on it. And this is one that you can kind of, you can rock back on it if you want. You can light switch it, or you can kind of preload it a little bit and push button it and it works great either way. I just love that view. I love seeing the precision that he's built this in. I'm going to tell you right now, Dan is going to be one of the hot makers to keep your eyes out for. He's going to be one of those guys that you're not going to be able to get his knives because the problem is this is only the tenth knife that he's made period. That's it. That's all he's made so far. He began making knives uh, in June 2013, just about a year ago. And it's taken him a year to get to knife number 10. So being, you know, a, the, the, he's a part-time maker 
and that he's taking extreme care with every single knife that he's making. Even if you're on his books right now, you're not going to see a knife for a year, maybe a year and a half. He's got five on his bench right now that he says he's going to be finishing up on, and then they'll be out the door. So you got to keep in mind that if you're going to order, and you certainly can, he's not turning anybody away. You know, he says, though, you know, I'm a part-time maker. It's taken me a long time to get the knives made. So the best thing you can do is look for him on the USN. His uh, username on USN is D Galloway, D G A L L O W A Y. And you can shoot him a private message or you can make a post and uh, call his attention to it. And you can get on his books, but he, he's not even going to be promising any dates. It's not like he's going to go, okay, well, it's a year. He's not going to tell you that. He's just going to say, I'll be happy to put you down. And when your name comes up, I'll let you know what I'm making, what models I have available. So don't get your heart too set on the Stingray or any other particular model. But the cool thing is, it's worth the wait. Look at the finishing on this blade. Does this say to you, Junior Knife Maker, does this say to you, this is a guy that's only been making knives for a year and he's only made 10? No, not at all. The finish work is actually quite astounding. That is a perfect hand rub satin. He's mirror polished the top swedge and even the secondary bevel, the sharpened edge, is mirror polished. That pivot ring is incredible. Beautiful fitment. Great looking pivot. Details all the way around. I love this part here when you fold the knife into the holes. Let's try that again. It's just beautifully done all the way around. Just fantastic. Nice sculpted pocket clip. Works great. Uh, Bill not only suggested that I carry his knife, but he um, damn near demanded it. So I did carry it yesterday for a full day. Played with it all day. Had it in and out of the pocket all day. It's a great clip. It does hang up a little bit when you go to retrieve it, when you go to pull it out. It wants to hang up just a little bit right there. So I would probably suggest maybe a little bit more of a rounded edge there. But other than that, great retention. Works fantastic. Looks nice and clean. Goes great with the flow of the design. We were having a discussion on Instagram yesterday uh, about sculpted clips versus spring clips. And uh, one of the things I said is, yeah, keep in mind, anybody can make a sculpted clip, but are they going to make it where it actually accentuates the design, the flow, the lines of their knife? Or are they just going to sculpt out some kind of block and throw it on there? And even though this isn't you know, terribly intricate, it works with the shape of the knife and it works well. I think this is an attractive knife. It feels so good in the hand. It's a big knife. You've got a big four-inch blade here. You know, let's let's not pussyfoot around this. It's a big-ass knife. It's got some weight to it, being a titanium frame lock. This is going to be something that not everybody will be able to carry in their pocket. Now, if you do enjoy a larger knife and your state laws allow for it, uh, with or without a license, whatever that the... the uh, the case may be, this is something that you definitely want to look into. If you can find one secondary, if you can find one that Buddy's selling, or you can get on Dan's list, then by all means do so. Uh, but for me, I would probably, and as much as I like this, and I actually uh, told him I do want a Stingray, but you know, if he introduces a 3.5 to 3.85 inch bladed flipper in the future, I'm going to be all up in that. That's going to be, you know, because that's kind of my sweet spot personally, and everybody's different. But as far as the build quality, I mean, if, if you handed this knife to pretty much anybody and said, this guy's been making knives for 15 years and he just released this awesome new flipper, what do you think of it? They'd look at everything, they'd play with it, they'd be looking for that, that pivot play, which there is none when you release the lock. There is no blade play whatsoever. Nice solid lockup, great lock geometry. No up and down play at all. You can't force the lock over. The action is smooth and clean. All areas of the knife are finished. 
He did some great chamfering work right here to give you a little more relief to drop your thumb into so you've got more space. The pivot, the fitment of the pivot ring is fantastic. The precision of the CNC work, the anodizing is done nicely, all the satin finishing all the way around, the polished finishes on the other surfaces, the Timascus backspacer, all of the details are there, all of the hallmarks of a great maker that's been making knives for 15 years. And they're going to critique it and they're going to look at it and go, yeah, this is a damn nice knife. You know, I'd pay, you know, eight to eight to nine hundred, maybe a thousand dollars for this knife. Sure. Who, who, who made it? And that's when you go, actually, the dude hasn't been doing this for 15 years. He's been doing it for about oh, 11 months. This is only the 10th knife he's ever made. And he charges uh, around six six fifty for it. I mean, holy shit. This is what I love. One of the things that I've become very fond of doing is finding newer makers that are doing astounding things that nobody knows about them yet. So you do have a chance to get in and get an order with them. Hey, I'd lo I love coming out here with... You know, Rexfords and Marshes and Beggs and, and all these great, amazing knives. The fact is, you can fall in love with the, the knife that you're seeing on video and you're never going to own one because they're not taking orders. And the secondary market is so insane because of that, that it's not within the realm of possibility for most of us. And what I really enjoy is coming out here with a maker that's fresh, that's new, that's excited about what he's doing and still has some openings available so that you can place your order. And I got to tell you guys, if you're looking for something different, this is a great way to go. He's not very expensive. In my opinion, uh, this would be $800 to $1,000 by anybody, and you know this. To look at this and go, it's six to seven hundred bucks. Even set up with the Timascus, he says, "Oh, I would top that out at around seven hundred bucks." Well, shit, shit on me. That is incredible. So, if you're looking for something unique, if you're looking for a great, fast, snappy action, beautiful hand satin rub, uh, hand work everywhere, and some precise machining to add that additional flair. Man, it's kind of hard not to fall in love with this knife. It's not going to be for everybody. This is not, you know, everybody's picture-perfect EDC. But I like it. It's got a great feel in the hand. Like I've said before, I wear a size large glove, so this is a big, big knife. But it's contoured so nicely. Nice large flipper tab that adds a bit of a finger guard here, but it's not really in the way. Yes, it does protrude quite a bit, but... Didn't realize that it was as big as it was all day long carrying it. It's very easy to access that flipper. He's done some great jimping on here, which I'm not sure if my camera is going to let me focus on. There we go. Great jimping on there, which does give you a nice purchase. If that were, if that were satin or polished in any way, I think it, the shape of it might have been a little bit too slick. But it works to form fit around your index finger and it's grabbing my skin and that just rips open fantastic action I know Justin Laffer just got one uh, I think his was the fourth one that Dan made and I know that he is totally in love with his and guys when you hear somebody like Justin Laffer who has had the best of the best in his collection in his pocket in his hands and he says, this guy is probably in the top 10% of makers working today. That's a really, really big deal. And I value Justin's opinion. He's a friend, and he's never steered me wrong. And he actually put Dan's uh, name in my ear a long time ago. And I was at that point where I was going, no, no more, no more amazing new makers because I'm so, I'm just, all my money's tied up for the next two years, basically, with all of the orders that I have coming in. And I was a dummy and did not get in on his books at that time. So, yeah, it took me a little while longer. I finally got in. And now I see I am going to be so pleased with my knife, whatever it may be. And there's that view again. There's my favorite part. 
Sure, all the elaboration, the speed holes, they're all fantastic. But right there, the precision that this is made to, you almost cannot pass light between the frame and the blade. So there you go, guys. There is your 20-minute long look. If you get the chance, get your order in. Like I said, he's not really turning anybody away. Contact him through the USN and uh, enjoy it. And it's going to be a long wait, but sometimes that long wait, you know, it, it just builds up that great level of anticipation. And this is one that's not going to let you down when that wait is over. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. i got a few more videos to get done before Blade Show. Yeah! Next week, boy, I can't wait for that. I'll see you guys on the next video.